Hi, my name is Jeff. I'm a digital media manager and I'm a mom as well, a book lover. We've been reading since childhood and welcome to Book Club. Why do you read? So, um, reading for me is, as I said, a childhood habit, purely stemming from I grew up watching my dad read a lot. So my dad used to read like a lot of books like Grisham, Wilbur Smith, Jackie Collins, Daniel Steele back in the day. I picked up a lot of books from a very young age. So I think maybe stemming from the interest, he now started buying me books that were age appropriate. So I started reading Ladybird and then went through the typical reading Hardy Boys, uh, Nancy Drew and the likes. What was the name of Wesley Drew with the Moses series? I think I read everything in that. Uh, Pacetas. So it was just a childhood habit that was grown with me into adulthood. So, and reading from this is a source of entertainment and, and knowledge. And this is a nice thing to read. It's something to grow up with. So now because you've touched on your reading journey, so so how has it evolved from uh, your childhood? How did you how are you reading in high school, for example? Would you read the typical romantic books in high school? How did you did how how was your reading in campus and how is your reading now? How my reading has evolved so far has been that I don't think much has changed. I love books, but there are certain genres I will not touch. Like I'm not, I didn't go through the phase of moons and moons. I've never read them. I don't know what they're about. Like I've just never had that phase um, in life. And um, for me, my reading has evolved into the notion where I've really come to love African fiction. Maybe the reason why I say I love African fiction is because being African, I find the stories more relatable to the setting that that I'm in. Honestly, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Caucasian writers or anything. There are some who I really love. But I find reading stories set in Africa, whether it's a diasporan writer or someone who was born and raised in, in Africa, being more relatable. So that, that's how my reading has, has evolved. So I will read um, a lot of African writers, a lot of fiction. Um, but uh, romance and and um, sci-fi are just two genres that I've now never really, really gotten gotten into. Yeah. From African fiction, what else do you do you read, or what what have you been reading before? Mm. Uh, and then what are you reading now? And then do you have certain genres you want to try in the future? Um. So what I've been reading before, I think I've been reading a mix of everything. So I read thrillers, like crime kind of books. As I said, my reading, how it evolved was, um, I went through the phase of, um, you know, like reading certain authors. So I've read, I think, everything from Grisham, um, Wilbur Smith, Dean Coons. But then uh, I got to, to a point where I think I genuinely overgrew the books. So, um, yeah, so that's just, that's just basically, I just feel like I, I, I outgrew certain genre. What I'd really like to read currently is, um, I like all thrillers, not not really thrillers, this, um, how do I call it? This fantasy. Fantasy, yeah. I don't try fantasy because I'm seeing guys really um, hype them a lot on Bookstagram. But then again, I don't do really well with overhyped books. But for me, because I'm, I'm, I'm always like, willing to try um, what's new. So fantasy is something that I really, really want to, to try. There's one I've seen called um, like Children of Blood and Bone. I think it's a fantasy book. So I think uh, I'll pick it up soon and really like, see what the fuss is about doing the fantasy genre. Yeah. Do you have favorite or maybe books that I, impacted you? Uh, favorite yes, books and no, no. So asking me for a favorite book is like asking me if I have a favorite jazz, even if I just have one. So I don't really think I have favorites, but there's some which have really like stood out for me. Like the first book, the first African book I ever read was A Man of the People. Love it. I still have it. Um, so it's a book. My grandfather gifted it to me when I was around nine or ten it's a book i still have to date i've never lent it out i'm keeping it for my son whether he'd want to read it or not so that's a book um so chino actually to me is like really special because i've read uh, man of the people are of god 
this Robert um, stand up for me. A current author who I think anything they release is something I definitely read is Yaa Jassi. Because I've just finished, I read Home Going, I've just finished Transcendent Kingdom to be, and I really, really love her story of writing. Like, it's fresh, it's it's out of the box. She addresses, um, especially on Transcendent Kingdom, I think she addresses great uh, mental health in a very great way that I think so many African authors are very or have been afraid to like get into because um I think in the African setting talking about mental health is such is such a taboo, it's such a weird thing, you know. Like even twenty twenty one and you go to a friend and tell them, I think I'm struggling with A B C D and I want to go to therapy. It's something that we really like struggle with. So how she's addressed the whole thing that you know when your parents after certain year maybe it was a mental health issue and whatever. So whatever she releases I will definitely read and keep you know, for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Any other books or authors? Any other books or authors? So this is going to sound very really weird, but there's a book we read in high school, Coming to Bath. Yeah, I, I really like it's it's um I'm actually looking for a copy. If you can comment down below if you've seen where I can buy one because I've checked in so many bookshops I've never found it. I think we read Coming to Bath in high school just as a text for exams, for the sake of passing exams. But once you come and read it outside school and with a different notion, um, it's such a beautiful book and how the story was set and how I think the main character and name was Kamal can't remember, but how she just navigated her whole, you know, um, story was really beautiful for me. So yeah, that's also a book that has really like stuck with me. So in this book I read recently, We're All Birds of Uganda. Um, I think for for a debut, um, because I I read that um the author that was the first that's the first book that they put out. I think for a debut that was such a beautiful story because I think the writing was really good, the story was really well thought out. Of course, yes, there are some places which had gaps and whatever, but I think the story was really well thought out. There's also this Kenyan author. I think it was written the Havoc of Choice. Of I have read on Twitter and Instagram that there are people who really didn't like it. There were so many gaps in the story. But then again, to me, I think why are we putting down a Kenyan author who's put out such a great story? Yes, so the gaps here and there. I don't think there's any book in this world which is like a hundred percent perfect. But having a story which is exclusively your own and um she has like her own publishing imprint is is like super dope. Yeah, enjoy it. So actually for her I'd also like really want to see um what are the kind of work she puts afterwards, the kind of work she's doing with book bank and um, restoring libraries at the Mahina Library. So that's an author that I'd also like to really follow her work and see like what more she can do given what she's done now. When I have moms or parents coming, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I, I really want to hear uh, what, what are they doing? Because you already love books. You know how important reading is. Mm. Like, what are you doing to instill that in your child? Because most of us we didn't read as young people. Like, yeah. Our parents never sat at, at you on the bedside and actually <laughs> they never really read. <laughs> it was a foreign concept. It was a foreign concept. Mm. But you now, as much as it's maybe something a, a Western, but now you understand the importance of reading mm. and the importance of starting reading at an early age as compared to yeah. you at 20 something is when you're starting to. Mm. look for things to read. Yeah. Like, what are you doing as a mom? So, as a mom, because I have a two-year-old, and what I've come to realize is children learn from observing. So, um, the few times I've sat maybe like in the living room or in my son's room, and I pick up a book, he'd always want something for himself to look also, because he'd, most of the time he'd want to imitate like, what I'm doing. So, um, that in, so having seen seeing that um, there's an interest stemming from what I'm doing. Um, so each time I buy a book, I'll definitely like, pick something up for him age appropriate as well. So like currently we have, um, I'm reading, we're reading together just for bedtime. Uh, there's a big book I got a textbook center for a hundred bedtime stories. So cause um, where I live is, there, there aren't a lot of kids, but I think the reading to him is really like helping a lot with 
with um, developing his speech because um, you see, like, I'm showing like one, two, you know, like this, just a basic like of words, and um, he's been able to pick it up. So for me, I think going forward, it's a it's a habit that I really encourage for him to um to stand purely out of the fact that for me, part of my career um entails that I you know like have to read read a lot and be able like to you know like know a lot of things um in various industries. So for me, it's it's a habit that for me I really like encourage him. Cause and also like giving like age appropriate books maybe from what I read from my childhood or what's you know like what's kind of because things have changed things that were great like twenty years ago I think that maybe you know, created kind of um so that's that's something that I really like want him to develop to like have something he loves and enjoy for himself because as much as I'm much older right now, but to date, I'd have like dates with my dad and their books will read together and we'll go to like a Java somewhere and like talk about it. So it's, it's a relationship that I also want to develop with my child. Yeah. Okay, that's very good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> amazing moms. <laughs> More than the amazing moms. So now let's do your reading habits. Mm-hmm. So my reading habits, I'm a mood reader. I'm not the kind of person who would say like I've scheduled my time between this time to this time is is reading thing for me i'm a mood reader if i wake up today and my mind is like we're not there i will not stress and pick a book for the sake of a good dreams count or for people to see me that i have a book to read i go with mood if i pick up a book and i see a few pages or a few chapters in i'm just not getting it i'll put it down pick pick up something again so for me i'm just mostly like a, a mood a mood reader i don't i don't put if i'm not in the mood i don't push it if i am I can read like three books at a book, so it makes it some more thing. Yeah. Um, so yes, the beginning of the year I usually have a goal, but I don't usually have a list of this is what I want to read or this is what I really want to read. I think so far over the last two years, most of my book purchases have been through Bookstagram, to be honest. Because um, I'd say someone like um, Joanne and Reviews by Frankie and Saka for Coffee, I've found what they enjoy to be almost like 90% things I've come, I've loved myself. Um, so for me, most of the books I'm reading or want to read is stuff they have read and probably left um, or didn't like. Because you see, I think everyone, everyone views a book in different ways. So most of the time I read something they have read just to see like what the hype was about or why didn't or why did they have um a different opinion to like what I have. Because there are instances where to be honest, books are grammars of hype books. And then when you yourself get into them and like have an eye into them, you usually like to what what was the first book. Like there's an author who I won't mention, Freeman, very hyped, the tab book. Hated it, never finished it. Can I mention it? Yeah. Chintu. No. I don't know what the fuck is about. I don't get it. Don't slot me in the comments, please. But I just, I honestly don't. I've tried like all her books, um, but it's, it's, it's not there for me. But there are people who really love her and you know, and who really like, respect the love they have for, for her. So it's the same way the guys who. Like I say, like myself, actually, like I really love Chimamanda, and the kids will be like, hell no. <laughs> yeah, so it, 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 it's just a different thing. Um, so, bookstagrammers, as I said, I follow it just, uh, I think, Black Black and Black Shorts, actually. I follow, like, the um, Kenyan ones who don't follow. Blah, 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 blah. So, Joanne, of course, um, because we want a very good friends, our kids always the same age. Um, Saka for Coffee, um, Reviews by Frankie, of course, Winebury, of course, I also go to Highland. Um, international, I see the only Instagram who I really follow is Little Lost Mafia. I could also listen to her podcast as well. I find her reviews like really great and very detailed in how she, um, you know, like talks about books and stuff. And I find her opinions very honest and biased. Yeah, so the first market is the one who really stands out for me. I hold books. 
I still have some of the books my dad bought for me when I was really young. Some, of course, uh, my mom has given out or they are lost, but most of them I still do have. Um, so I'm a physical reader. I like the feel, the smell of paper. But right now, I'm also getting into, I just got a Kindle recently, and the reason behind it is um, there are certain books which I really want to read, and there's a very high chance um, that they'll never, ever be in a Kenyan bookshop unless by chance something happens and you pass by Moe Avenue in Amaz and by luck, which, which the probability is like you see, you may never find it. Um, so I'm a, I love physical books, however, one thing I do not understand is why are books taxed? Why, <laughs> like, um. It gets like super expensive to buy books. It's so you can imagine for someone like me who has seen it would be get like two or three books a month. Um the minimum we'd spend is in like textbook center or prestige or rafu. Minimum is a thousand books just for one title. Um yeah, but I I still buy collect. I still I go to Inamas as well. Um so I'm not I'm not picky but I just prefer physical over over ebooks but I'm also now starting to love ebooks and um audiobooks as well. Not as much because um I just find sometimes the voices not to be the right ones. So yeah, but I'm 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 starting to, to love the each. Yeah. And let's talk about your current book. So my current book is Born Love for Roses, and the reason why I picked it up is I saw a review on um, Bookstagram. This is a South African author, because I realized most of the African titles I was reading were very West African. So I think a big chunk of the books by African authors in the market are, I think almost like 90% Nigerian. So for me it was just, um, it's just something I picked up because this is a South African author as much as she's, um, she's not black, she's Caucasian, um, but um, I just wanted to see like what, you know, like what the story is about and um, it's about a girl called Poppy who was um, rescued from a abusive parent and taken to her grandparents. This is a story of her like healing through the abuse from her parents and then um, how she loves, like she gets into an affair with a married man, so just a whole reason. I've decided it, so I'm not, I'm not going to much, much into it. The last thing you want to talk about mm -hmm. the reading tips that you share, and also feel free to share tips uh, with other moms on mm -hmm. how they can instill the reading culture in yeah. babies, uh, with the baby. My number one reading tip will be read what you love not because of the hype just because i'd tell you like i honestly will in such a romance book if that's what you love read that that's what that's what makes you happy um you don't have to pick up things because of hype i know in this age of social media um the instance is when people be like this is the best thing you'll ever read and maybe it's it's not for you so just read what you love enjoy it um, there is no, don't let people pressure you. I know nowadays people put um, goals on like good reads, and you see someone has gotten you to like it's half year, and someone is like at 70 books of 100, and you're like, oh my god, I've only done three or four. If three or four are good enough for you, then just do that. That's all that has. And um, for moms, I think, for me, I tell you like, to really like, encourage your kids to love love something like encourage them to stick into it it doesn't have to be reading really specifically if you see them like pick a book encourage like the the book you know like walk to them into a bookshop help them like pick up um stuff when you go out there and you see something that makes be appropriate for your kids please pick it up but i think for me just from how i was raised and encourage it not even just mom's parents in general I just encourage your kids to, you know, like delve into what they love because you just don't know what, you know, what the possibility of what encouraging them to do what they love will help them in the future. 
Um, so a part in short, there's a book I read, I think 2016 or 2017. Um, it's called Ken and Jessica, Odette and Who's Hard and Shocked. And the title of the book was Find Me and Afraid. So I think my part in short for me would be to tell this just to live your life and afraid. If you're not happy with a particular situation or with a job or you don't take with your life, just be unafraid and do what makes you happy. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please get our share to a thousand subscribers. Please <laughs> um, comment down below. You can follow me on Instagram as Mukoya Thiongo, Mukoya underscore Thiongo, or on Twitter at Mukoya R, and you can talk more about books, among other things. I'm not just Mukoya. Thank you.